Greetings, hi, the War Al greets you. I'm a very happy gamer right now, with Blizzard knocking it out of the park with their ongoing development of Overwatch, and Star Citizen looking like a good version of No Man's Sky. By the way, this is what happens when you pretend consoles don't exist, and spend your millions on making a good game, instead of shallow, misleading marketing. Even our friends at Valve Software are worthy of praise, with their implementation of a public test beta for upcoming patches. Finally! I've been campaigning to get this for years, so thank goodness. The positives of having a public beta build of the game are no better exemplified than through the beta test of the new Inferno, or Inferno. No, Valve didn't have their Infer nudes leaked. Instead, they invited the community to test the new map, give feedback, and find bugs. And we did. I had a large video written, voiced, ready to go that was a collection of feedback and bugs that needed to be fixed. Well, they already fixed most of the issues that I was going to bring up, and credited people who reported them in the patch notes. Out freaking standing, Valve. They've become very agile recently. To test out the beta builds for yourself, right-click on CSGO in your games list. Go to Properties, click on the Betas tab. From the drop-down, you can select the version you want to test. Once selected, the game files will automatically change to fit the beta build. And you can just launch the game as normal. I've been getting flack lately as a, quote, Valve fanboy. If you've ever watched my videos, especially my videos during the early beta of CSGO, you know that I've been consistent in my approach to developer feedback. I originally started making videos about Counter-Strike in the first place during the beta in order to promote giving meaningful, useful feedback to the developers instead of just hating on them like spoiled gamers usually do. The big personalities in the community were openly hostile towards Valve at the time. The consensus was that Global Offensive sucked and would be a massive failure. I didn't follow that consensus. I believed in the potential of the game as an eSport to rival StarCraft 2, which was the big eSport at the time before League of Legends dominated it. Back then, I was just another voice in the crowd. I wasn't War Al the YouTuber, but War Al from the forums. Not the War Lizard gaming forums, though. Yes, that's really in the patch notes. Valve has been calling people out since the beginning. Every once in a while, I think I'd like to return to a time where I could just make the videos I wanted and share the opinions that I wanted without being subject to all the crap that comes with being well-known. It's really difficult for me to voice unpopular or well-thought-out or different opinions these days, uh, considering how big the Counter-Strike scene has gotten, especially with the prevalence of so many people trying to be the first person to post the half-baked idea that everybody wants to hear. But enough about that stuff, let's get back to Inferno. So instead of pointing out all the bugs, I'm gonna give my feedback on the map so far. The visibility of the map has been massively improved. Much of the clutter and claustrophobic feel is gone, hallways are smooth, backgrounds don't blend with player models, and our beloved boiler is back in all its glory. It looks like a boiler fit for a king now. We're spoiled, gamers. We're definitely spoiled. I really like the windows on apartments. Before, it was very difficult to peer through the windows to make out a player. The fence at Graveyard is now lowered so you can actually see people through it. You can't just hide there, which is another massive improvement to visibility. The gap at New Box is gone as well, which was another position I had trained myself to just pre-shoot because of how difficult it is to actually see a player there. But that brings up another major change with the map, and that's the dumbed-down gameplay. Jumping puzzles have been removed for ramps, following the pattern on maps like Mirage. It's like they're trying to make these maps handicap accessible. Boosts have been removed in favor of self-boosts, and overall, the map is designed not to favor movement tricks, but instead seems to have more of a smooth flow to it as players traverse the map. I look at this as both a positive and a negative. It lowers the skill ceiling, but makes the map more fun to play for everybody. There's no convincing Valve of this either. It's very clear this is the direction that they're going. Another lowering of the bar is the addition of more restricted skyboxes. This is clearly to improve performance on the map, which is great, by the way. The map runs very well, but it does prevent a lot of strategies we've been used to. I think they've intentionally worked a lot on the performance on this map, considering the negative reaction to Nuke. Interestingly, one change Valve has already made is getting rid of the restrictive skybox from Alt Mid to A Site, something I whined about on stream while testing the map and was not happy about. Well, that's good. Good thing they did that. One of these dumbing down changes I'm not happy with is closing off B site. You can't malt off new box anymore, and you can't nade down B from site. But again, there's a lot of good changes. The map looks better, it runs better, it plays better, it has better visibility, it's less frustrating to traverse. 
One thing they seemingly did not address though, was the difficulty in retakes on the map. In my opinion, this was a massive gameplay problem with the map that made it less fun to play and less fun to watch. The difficulty in performing retakes on the map often led to games where, after the terrorists captured a bombsite, the CTs just decided to save, even when they had equal numbers, where on a different map, they would have attempted a retake. Statistically, this happened more often on Inferno than any other map, at both the professional level and the matchmaking level. I don't think anything has been done to mitigate this issue, as the general layout of the map remains almost completely intact, the only major difference being the removal of Darkroom. From the rumors I heard, they tried adding a new passageway, but in testing, the gameplay didn't work out, so maybe it just wasn't possible to do this. I can offer a small suggestion though, make it so that you can't plant the bomb on the pit side of A site. On this map, the safe place to plant the bomb is also the best place to plant it, which I don't think is good bomb site design. I'm excited about the new Inferno, and I look forward to playing it in matchmaking and league. I would also love to see the professional players adjust to it. I think it'll be a very clean transition, though. Pretty much pro players don't have much extra to learn, but they do have some things to forget. The elephant in the room is, which map gets the axe? Which map sits out of active duty to make way for Inferno? You gotta have seven. The prevailing theory is that Dust 2 will be removed and reworked, since it's the only map that hasn't been given a massive makeover yet. I think many people would prefer if Nuke was taken out instead because of the negative reception that map has received. Personally, I would prefer they remove Cobblestone, as I think the meta is very stale on that map and it's not very much fun to watch pro matches on it. Overall though, the Inferno beta is a massive success. The community came together and worked to test the crap out of this map. People found game-breaking bugs that would have been just plain stupid to be in the production build, and they were fixed very, very quickly. When you have an army of dedicated, focused nerds at your disposal, it's a shame to not use them. Valve has finally unleashed the nerds. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. Now, what's this here? A coffin? Who died? A nuke? Nuke? Coffin? Minus nuke plus inferno confirmed?